In the previous video, we have surrounded our dungeon with walls, a very basic wall, because we are not tweaking the look of those walls, but we are going to come to that. For now, I would like to create another algorithm that will allow us to create corridors, so that we can create a dungeon that consists of multiple rooms connected with corridors, so maybe we can create doors and unlock those doors only after you find a key or defeat all enemies. And to achieve this, we are going to go to our scripts and tweak our random walk algorithm, or rather create a new version of it, that will allow us to walk in one direction throughout the length of a walk, so that we can create corridors that are connected together. Uh, so to tweak it, we are going to visit our procedural generation algorithms script. So let's open it up. Great. We are going to create another method inside our procedural generation algorithms. So let's create a new public static. Again, we are going to return a hash set of vector to ints, and let's call it random walk corridor. And we are going to pass to this method a vector to int, it will be start position, and we are going to pass here int corridor length. So this method will make our random walk select a single direction and walk in this direction through the corridor length, and we are going to return our path created, and we can pass the last position on our path to get the next start position. And since this will not create a repetition, let's change the hash set to list, because this time we want to access the last position and list keeps order of elements in it, and this will allow us to get the last element, which, we, which was the last visited position in, of our corridor, to pass it to the next corridor, so those corridors are connected. So this is why we are using not a hash set, but rather a list. Okay, so let's create a list of a vector to ints. This will be our corridor equals new list. And we are going to select a direction. So var direction equals our directions 2D dot get random direction, random cardinal direction. Now, what we are going to do is repeat our action from the previous algorithms. So we are going to loop for tab tab i equals zero tab and let's change the length to corridor length. And for each position, we are going to uh, create a, a path. But for, before that, we need to save the var current position equals our start position. And in here, in the for loop, we are going to call our current position plus equals direction and we are going to set current position uh oh sorry path or other corridor dot add and we are going to add the current position now this will mean that the first start position will not be added now what we can do is we can add at the start to our corridor dot add the current position will be which will be the start position and later we are going to use hash set to store those positions so that we can avoid having duplicates because if we add this current position we are going to add this current position from the last corridor because this will be the same position as the end position of the previous corridor that we are using what we can do after for loop we are going to return our corridor and this is it for our new algorithm now to use it, we will need to save all those scripts and let's go back to Unity. All right. We are going to create a new C# script, so let's right click in the scripts folder, create C# script and let's call it corridor first dungeon generation. And let's open this script up. All right. Now, as you might recall, we have created an abstract method called abstract dungeon generator so that we can create only one custom editor. But 
In our corridor first dungeon generation, we are going to use random walk generation to create our rooms. So it would be wiser to not inherit from the abstract dungeon generator, but rather from our random or our simple random walk generator, because it contains the run random walk, which, will be which we will be able to use for our generation. So we are going to tweak it so that it can take parameters that we have passed here. Uh, so actually we can do it right now. So instead of passing this from the field of our class, we are going to pass it to our run random walk. So let's pass this a simple random walk SO, random walk parameters. And let's rename it maybe control RR to parameters. And inside our run procedural generation, we are going to pass our random walk parameters. And now we will be able to reuse this method inside child classes of this simple random walk dungeon generator. So make sure that you make this change to your simple random walk dungeon generator. And if you do, let's go back to our corridor first dungeon generation. And maybe let's rename it to generator since this is the name of our previous class. So control RR on this name and let's change the generation to generator. Okay. Now we do not want to inherit from mono behavior, but rather from our simple random dungeon generator. Simple random walk dungeon generator. And now what we will need to do is we are going to override and we can override our run procedural generation. Now to run our generation, we are not going to run the base class, which is from our simple random walk dungeon generator, but rather we are going to create our own. And for this, we will need to call corridor first generation. This will be our method. Alt enter and generate this method. And here we will want to call our corridors uh, generator, our random corridors. So to do this, we will need to have a couple of private fields here. We will need to have a private int corridor length. Let's set it to be 14. Corridor count. Let's set it to be 5, for example. And we can add serialized fields to it so that we can expose it in the inspector. Next, what we will need to do is create a public float room percent. And this will be the percent of rooms that we create. Actually, let's make it private. Let's add to it a serialized field attribute. And let's add to it another attribute called range. So we range it from, for example, 0.1f to 1, because this is a percent. And at the end, we are going to create another serialized field. And let's create public, simple, random, walk SO. And this will be the room generation parameters. This will be used later on when we create rooms, when we, after we create our corridors. Let's just set the room percent to be something like 0.8 by default, and let's save it. Now we are going to create our corridors. So in the corridor first generation, we are going to create a hash set of vector two ints, and those will be the floor positions equals new hash set. Great. Next. We are going to call a method create corridors. And we are going to pass here our floor positions hash set. And this will be it for now. Let's alt enter on this method and generate it in our class. This will be very similar to our simple random walk generation because we are going to call var current position in this method equals our start position which we have inherited from our abstract uh, inheritance so from our simple random walk generation dungeon generator we have our current position and we are going to call for tab tab to create a for loop i equals zero i less than corridor length 
our corridor count, sorry. So for the corridor count, we are going to create var path equals our procedural generation algorithms dot random walk corridor. And we are going to pass our current position of the corridor. We are going to pass our corridor length. And I think this is it. This will generate us our corridor positions. Now, we want to set our current position to be equal to our path with index, so square brackets, path dot count minus one. So we will set the current next current position to the last position on our corridor so that we ensure that our corridors are connected. Next, we are going to add the path or our corridor. So let's maybe rename it to corridor. And we are going to add to our floor positions dot union with our corridor. Okay, I have not uh, renamed it correctly, so I'm going to have to pass paste the corridor name inside our current position set. So, okay, and now we have set our current position. We have added to our floor positions the corridor. And for this video, this will be it for creating corridors. Since we have returned our floor positions, we have them here in the corridor first generation. We can simply call our tilemap visualizer dot paint floor tiles and we can paint our floor positions as well as we can call our wall generator dot create walls and we can pass our floor positions as well as our tilemap visualizer. And this will be it for our new method, for our new dungeon generator using corridors first. Let's save it, let's go back to Unity. Your rate, we have a warning that the room percent is never used. We will use it soon enough, uh, I think in the next video. For now, let's create a new object in our hierarchy. So let's right click, create an empty object. Let's call it corridor first procedure, uh, dungeon generator. Okay, let's reset the transform using those three dots reset and let's add to it corridor first dungeon generator script. As you can see, we need to select our tilemap visualizer. I'm going to select the same one. The start position is 0, 0, random walk parameters. We can select any of those because right now we are not using them. Let's select the island. Now, as you can see, we have a couple of parameters. Uh, apparently, we have exposed the random walk parameters inside the simple random walk dungeon generator. So we can use this or we can leave the room generator parameters. So now we should be able to click create a, a dungeon and you can see that it has created our dungeon. And since this is a random walk, it can again go back and forth when creating our corridors. So we can uh, make sure that we increase the corridors count to something like 10. And now we have created a corridor. And as you can see, it can create different corridors. But what we have here is that our, co our corridors are always connected. So now what we can do is create rooms at some points of the corridor. So uh, we are going to select random points from the ends of our corridors to create rooms there. And we can create our dungeon that is connected. So multiple rooms that are connected with corridors. We can increase the corridor's length, something like 30 maybe. And now we can see that we are safe to assume that we will create separate rooms and they will not overlap if we adjust the random generation parameters for the rooms. We're going to take care of it in the next video. Now, if you are enjoying this tutorial, leave a like, leave a comment. It helps me a lot. See you in the next video.